Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kieran and I like to help people using a spiritual perspective. Okay, so today guys, I wanted to talk to you about how to discover your truth. Okay, so um, there is at least a thousand different versions of truth that exist within your reality, right? Uh, the different things that you see or hear or experience, people say one thing, people say another thing, people claim, uh, you know, such things as twin flames, people claim to be star seeds, people claim they're from Atlantis, people claim that everything happens for a reason, and other people claim that you're in control of your destiny, and other people say that you have no control over your life at all. And there's all these little variations, and those are just some of the things that uh, you can consider truth. Okay, so in order to really understand truth, why don't we start with a paraphrased version of uh, my own definition of truth, okay? To the best of my ability to even say it, okay? So what my version of truth is, and I wrote it down here, is the most objective reality or understanding of something that can't be taken away or disproven, okay? So what that means to break that down is the reason I put the most objective reality is because it is going to be the most personal objective thing that you can find within yourself, within your capability that can't be taken away from you, that can't be disproven, right? And that it is your understanding of something, okay? So if it is true that you love someone, then you are essentially understanding with the most objective knowledge that you have and wisdom that that reality of your love for that person can't be taken away by outside influences, whether or not they're other people or external factors or family members or circumstances or money issues or whatever, and then it can't be disproven, meaning that people can't convince you that you don't love that person or that they can't convince you that the person isn't good for you and that life circumstances can't make your heart cold for that person, okay? It is the most objective truth that you have. And oftentimes you're not able to prove that, but you feel it. Truth is a feeling. Now you will know truth if, and only if, it is coming from a place of love and compassion and wisdom. That is where true truth comes from, okay? And that truth that I just told you fits my own definition, okay? Now, furthermore, truth is not true, so it's false. False truth comes from fear, and it comes from pain, which you can definitely argue is the same thing. Pain is definitely a, a part of fear as well. But to explain that using an example, let's say um, someone is racist and their, their truth is that, let's say when they were younger, a couple of, let's say Mexicans uh, disrespected them or bullied them or displayed certain behaviors that were otherwise considered to be uh, unhealthy or unkind to the individual in question. And so they grew up with a unhealthy view of Hispanic people, of Mexicans, and they now are racist towards them. And so their truth is that maybe all Mexicans are thieves or all Mexicans have cars that are uh, low riders or all Mexicans, I don't know, eat tacos for their whole life. I, I don't know. I'm not racist against Mexicans, but I assume those would be some of the stuff, stereotypes, stereotypes, right? And those ideas are based in fear and they're based in pain because they're based upon a judgment of something. That's not a reality because the truth isn't from a place of love. So you have to look at truth as first and foremost, something that's either from love and wisdom and compassion or is it something that is from fear and pain is somebody's bias and subjectivity to their own experiences altering their perception of what is true okay and many times people do this even within spiritual circles i personally see this all the time and i also have seen this historically throughout religion and just history in general and we see it all the time with with people in just their daily lives okay and so Right now, I'm going to give you guys five ways, maybe practical, maybe not so practical, but these are legitimate ways that you can use to uncover your own truth, okay? So the first one that I put is to be open to life's experiences, okay? So what that means is that if you are open to life's experiences, whatever they may be, you will 
be able to discern whether or not you like or dislike something. And those two things are very important. You need to know equally what you dislike and what you like. If you're open to life's experiences uh, without this attitude of judgment and you can take something in and, and sort of observe it with a childlike innocence, you will discover the first step. You'll discover your truth. You'll discover more of what you are and who you are. You'll discover something. So I'll take a very, very simple example from my life today. I went for a long walk today and I discovered a part of the city that I haven't been to yet. It's in Toronto. It's called Kensington Market. It's got these cool little shops, these houses that have been sort of renovated into like these restaurants and bistros and cafes and weird spiritual stores. And then there's like all these coffee places. I don't like coffee. I drink hot chocolate because I'm nine. But the, the atmosphere is so cool and all these people. And even though it's COVID and all this stuff was, uh, you know, lines and some of it was closed and uh, less people, obviously. Um, and a lot of people wearing masks. And it's, of course, it's winter time too. But um, even despite all of that, I thought it was really cool. And I was very open. I didn't think it was cool because, I mean, there was lots of reasons why I personally believed it was cool. But I didn't think it was cool because, um, because of something that someone told me or because of what my mind convinced me. It was just I experienced it as a truth that this was a cool place. Now, I'm sure there's people in Toronto who exist who think Kensington or what who thinks that Kensington Market is like a shithole or that they hate it. I'm sure that exists. I'm sure there's also people that don't like the Grand Canyon or the Eiffel Tower, right? Um, but certainly I would have to talk to those people to understand the definitions of truth and where they're coming from. But I know for myself, I went in there with this very wonder, wonder like, like this very wonderful kind of view. Like I was like uh, the childlike wonders, what I'm trying to say, the, the innocence about it. I was very kind of open to that experience and I discovered it first for the first time I just happened to walk by I thought it was cool it resonated with me and you know I grew up here as a kid so maybe even I remember it uh, not mentally but um, maybe through emotions or something but uh, it was such a cool experience and I really like it and it's a shame that COVID affected it so much but it looks really cool and that was my truth something I discovered right simple very basic right not like a life-altering kind of truth about anything but it was still something that I recognized as a beautiful experience. And that was true to me because it was from wisdom and it was from love, okay? It's not a powerful truth. It's not a profound truth. We're just talking about a like and a dislike, but I was open to life's experience. That's the point. I didn't hate life. I didn't go into the situation cursing my life. I didn't think, you know, ah, I'm so shitty and, 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 you know, with my head down kicking rocks and stuff because maybe if I did, I would have missed it entirely. And then maybe I would have seen a picture of Kensington Market online somewhere not a very appealing picture and maybe I would have drawn my own conclusion and said that's shitty I don't want to go there and then I never would have but this way I'm open to life's experience so I'm not going to spend a long time talking about this step it's just that whatever life's experience has for you be open to it and you will discover in one way anyway how to uncover your truth by your likes and your dislikes and what really kind of resonates with you like that okay so number two is spend time alone. This is very obvious, okay? Because when you go through life, you're going to need to reflect on things. When you spend time alone, not only are you becoming uh, more in touch with yourself, getting to know yourself more, enjoying your own company, which is not only important to yourself, but it's important as well to having successful relationships with people, friends or romantic, right? And you can do this by simple reflection. You can do this by journaling. You can do this by meditation. You can do this by being still. You can find ways to relax, take a hot bath, masturbate for an hour, whatever it is that you use to relax, do those things because that will allow you to be able to reflect. So whatever resonates with you, however you reflect, which is of course your truth, however you do that, take that in, take that in for yourself because that's going to allow some answers, some wisdom to come back up. Okay, so if you're struggling in your life to find answers, spend some time alone. Take solid chunks out of your day or your week to give yourself space to recuperate your energy, your mental fortitude, your physical energy, as well as your emotional body, allowing these things to come into alignment by just being still and allowing life to catch up to you. Because that's what happens when you're still. When you stop moving and you stop doing, being busy, you allow time and you allow life and you allow experience to catch up with you. The reason that we're always running from the past or escaping our problems or that we feel these sense of dreads from childhood that we maybe not even 
uh, that we maybe can't even really realize or understand right now, the stresses of life, is because we don't stop. And so we keep going and those things haven't had the time to process through our actual spirit, through our body, through our emotional body, and through our energy field. Okay, So keep those things in mind. Spend time with yourself. Thirdly, take risks. Okay, Do new things that allow you to uh, follow your heart. Okay, so for instance, if you want to travel somewhere, uh, but maybe you're not sure if it's a good idea, take the risk and do it because you'll discover more of yourself. All right, if you want to ask a person out, you know, take a risk and do it, be vulnerable. You might get rejected, there might even be a good chance that you get rejected, but if you do, you'll discover something about yourself. You might discover how you react to things, and that's the truth. And when you discover things about yourself, you discover things about society. You discover things about humanity. And if you're awakened, or you're spiritual, or you have a deep connection to the esoteric and sort of existential topics, then you'll discover things about the soul. You'll discover things about people in existence with each other, the collective. You'll understand those things, okay? So, small example from my own life. Uh, one time I asked a girl out at a library. It was so awkward and dumb. I, I don't know why I did it, but to be honest, but I did. I did do it. And she rejected me, um, and I was more disappointed than I thought I would be, and yet I discovered a couple things about myself. Uh, let's, I'll start with two. Let's just do two, okay? Um, the first thing I discovered about myself was that I had only asked her out because I wanted attention, and I realized that because of, um, because of the fact that, um, because of how I reacted after. I, I was like, why am I so disappointed? And it was because I was sort of like making her into something that she wasn't, right? And there was no reason to do that. She was just a normal girl. She, you know, men and girls, they both shit. They both have quirks. They both do dumb shit, okay? No one's perfect. So I was making her into something that didn't need to, okay? So I put this pressure on myself that never needed to be there, okay? Uh, and I also knew like nothing about her. I just took a risk, okay? So I understood one thing about myself, right? It may not have been pleasant to know, but it allowed me to work on that, okay? And the second thing that I learned about myself was that I didn't, I, um, because of that experience, because of getting rejected, I learned that I was willing to take risks. So even though the experience was negative, I learned that I have courage. I have the ability to take risks. I have the ability to do things, even if they don't end up well. I do have that ability, which means I'll need that ability to do it again, and then that time there'll be successful outcomes. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. You can take that and apply it to anywhere in your life, but take risks, and the information that you need will kind of come through you. It'll be able to go in there, okay? All right, so number four is, and this is important, um, and very hard to discern, but don't get overwhelmed with information. Uh, sort of let go of information overload. Let's say the average person has an Instagram, a Twitter, Facebook, um, uh, friends or uh, communities, and YouTube channel, and so they get all of this fucking information that just comes to them. And that is going to confuse the shit out of you, especially if you're in a point in your life where you're not too sure about what it is you're supposed to believe about yourself, how you're supposed to go about your journey, how you're supposed to become awakened, how you're supposed to go through a process of understanding yourself when everybody's telling you this is what you should do to understand yourself. Even this video will count as overload if you've watched 40 other videos just like this and you know, 30 of them say different shit. Who are you supposed to believe? You can take all the stuff that I've said, right? Obviously, um, and this is—I'll well, go into the fifth point, which is, of course, ultimately how you're going to know. But the information overload will just confuse you, and it will leave you feeling ultimately drained, and that's going to suck. Okay, so you have to avoid uh, when you're looking for answers. It seems counterintuitive, but try to avoid, like, try to avoid going to a bunch of different places for information. Use the first three steps that I've already talked about in order to find out what the best source of credible information for your soul is going to be. Because it might not be me, it might not be someone else, and that's the whole point. What what you might need to hear, your soul might lead you to a specific book, and that's what you need to hear, right? That's what you need to see, that's what you need to read. Maybe you didn't need to go on Instagram and check a whole bunch of stuff, or do a bunch of pick a card readings, or watch a tarot video, or watch this video, or watch me, or do anything. You just needed that one thing. So. 
listen to yourself. Other times it might lead you to me and you might get the answers you're looking for and you'll be like, oh, great, awesome. Then don't go look again. You got your answer, okay? Now, number five is how you discern all of that bullshit and it's the fifth step um, to discovering your truth and that is obviously pay attention to what feels good. If you, even if you have no logical reason to not or to believe something, uh, that you feel good or wrong about, you have to trust your feelings. So pay attention to your intuition. Pay attention to what doesn't feel true for you. Let's say you watch a, um, a video of mine, okay? And you don't think the information is relevant or you don't think that it's true. Now, the information certainly might be true. You might have your own issues and that's a whole different topic about what resonates because the things that resonate with us Things that are true for us often change and that's why I said the definition the most objective okay because truth does change over time especially if our concept of truth isn't as open as it could be okay there's a quote might be from Socrates that says something along the lines of the smartest people are the ones who continue to learn and the quote goes on and on to say other stuff like I think it ends with the dumb people always have all the answers okay so Anyway, the idea is that if you're always expanding, you get more knowledge, you get more wisdom, and your truth will tend to either grow, change, or dissipate. Okay, so, but generally speaking, for broad strokes purposes, do pay attention to what resonates and what doesn't, what makes you feel good, okay? Pay attention to that. And if you can, use the other steps to analyze why it doesn't feel good or why it does feel good, and use that as a tool to discern what information is right for you, okay? Uh, that, I think, should cover it. Those are some pretty easy ways to understand yourself. Maybe not easy, but they do work. Um, my biggest suggestion really um, is the information overload and the spending time alone. I think those ones are big into really, uh, into really understanding truth. Because if you spend time alone in meditation or reflection or journaling or whatever kind of process you use to spend time with your inner being, uh, that will lead you to the answers intuitively and then then you, and if you're not crowding yourself with too much shit, cell phone, TV, YouTube, all these freaking things, you'll be able to uh, have that answer come through clearly without the mind chattering away, okay? All right, guys, I'm gonna end that video here. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.